This meeting is being recorded. Could you introduce yourself, Anya? Okay. I am Anya Yavritsa. Uh, I used to be called Anya Snohoba, and the Heralds decided they couldn't pass that, although they told me that it had been passed 30 some years ago. Um, I have been playing in the SCA since 1971. I've been researching toys almost my entire life, uh, but I got very involved with researching them when I started having kids. And when Her Serene Highness, the Dowager Princess Janeltis tasked me with going ahead and finishing the research that she said she hadn't had a chance to do, um, which just, <laughs> that just touches me still, um, decades ago. So this section of my research is all about the types of dolls. Uh, one of the things that I want to show you first is if the screen sharing thing will come back up. There we go. Um, is this picture. This is a Bruegel's picture called Children's Games. Hopefully you can all see it. Um, and it has a little bit of everything. If you look it up on Wikipedia, and I believe the link is there in your handout, um, there is a listing of what all the kids are doing, including swimming uh, in the skin and stirring a pile of poo with a stick. But in the bottom left of the picture, uh, above the girls that are playing knuckle bones, there are a couple of girls that are kind of cut off in the, the Wikipedia version of this picture. They, I've seen the original. They, it, there's actually about another three inches of picture. <laughs> uh, and they are dressing dolls and they have uh, small furniture for the dolls. This is one of the best pictures that we've got of all the varieties of stuff that kids got into. Um, let me pull up now my little intro here. Okay. And click share. Why is it like 20 clicks? All right. This is the intro for the class. And I basically wanted to show people some of the documentation that we're using for dolls. Um, the first picture is a Cronach picture, late Renaissance. Uh, the second picture right below that is a bunch of wooden toys from uh, a Novgorod uh, dig. Then there's a Taka, uh, which is a German stump doll, although this one seems to have had legs added to it. And below that is a photo of a Renaissance girl with a fancy fashion doll. Um, Dolls go back a lot farther than that. Uh, the top page, uh, top of the left-hand page, is from is a Roman jointed doll, and the top of the right-hand page is a Renaissance jointed doll, almost the same kind of a style, which is why I I put them opposite each other. And then girls playing with dolls, a little, I believe that's a boy. Uh, the doll in his hand, it's hard to see in this small picture, but the doll in his hand is a boy doll. Then jointed dolls again from Rome. Um, clay dolls. And a little knight on horseback. Good, I had him in here after all. That's for Rich's boy. Um, <clears throat> but these are from Germany in the late medieval era. And one that's a little more recent. How the Skraling saw the Norse. <laughs> And it's pretty much just a carved doll, a carved wooden, no, excuse me, I believe that one's ivory. Um, it's just a carved figure that uh, they believe was intended as a child's toy. Okay. Um, that's the overview. Now, one of the big ones that we have issues with in uh, documenting, researching toys is right. got it right in front of me and then I hit the wrong button, go figure. <laughs> um, 
share screen window. No, there we go. Is this. <laughs> Any of you that have kids have seen something of the sort. Um, by the time that Barbie has been chewed, um, run over by the lawnmower, buried for about five centuries, it's not going to look much like a Barbie. Right now, you can recognize it. But um, actually, the funny part is this is a Cruella de Vil doll. And a friend of mine posted it when their dog got hold of it, got into her collectible doll stuff, which I thought was just, ooh, ouch. But uh, so it's been immortalized here. Nice. That's I'm a problem. Karma about that one. Yeah. And uh, this happens a lot of places. One of the other problems, and this is one of those cringe stories as far as archaeology goes. There was, back when they were doing a lot, I think it was in the 60s or 70s, they were doing a lot in Central Europe on uh, digging up Neolithic graves. Uh, if you've read Gene, Gene All's books, The Mammoth Hunter uh, types, uh, that from that book, and Plains of Passage, she references the finds in there. And one of the digs, they dug up a sort of mangled piece of leather that was disintegrating pretty much already as they as they were handling it, you know, because once you crack crack it open, oxygen gets to things, they start to deteriorate. Well, they set it aside to try to treat. These days it would have been grabbed and immediately treated. And one of the helpers on the site was cleaning up and threw out the trash. The thing is that the description of it, it had to have been a doll. It was a tube of leather that had been slit at the top and another piece inserted crossways that was knotted at the ends. And then a bulb of something, they, they thought it was wood and it probably was, but it was disintegrating as they were holding it. Um, but all we have are descriptions. Nobody even got a photo. And that would be the oldest doll in the record, if. Um, <clears throat> there are other bits and scraps that people have said, you know, hey, I think maybe that this was. But that's a third problem with documenting dolls. Are they dolls? Are they nameless piles of junk? Um, are they trash? Uh, are they religious figures? Are they funeral items? What the heck are they? There's a description in Little House in the Prairies of sort of one of the archetypal play toys of a child where Little House in the Big Woods, actually, Laura says she's talking, she'd been talking about Mary's ragdoll, her older sister's ragdoll. And Laura says, the doll was named Susan. It was only a corn cob wrapped in a handkerchief, but she was a good doll. I love that particular description, but how are you going to take a doll wrapped in a handkerchief and say that's a doll in the archaeological record? Big, big problem. So we don't have a whole lot of extant items. The ones we do were generally the toys of the children of the nobility, uh, or they were tucked carefully into a the hand of a corpse in a mummy or in the catacombs. Uh, some of them are in Egyptian tombs uh, as the Shabti, you know, the helper figurines. But are those dolls or are those, you know, helpers? A, a, we don't really know. Um, manuscripts and portraits have a lot of pictures of children playing with toys. The problem is, are they real? Uh, there's one. Actually, let me pop it open so I can show you the picture because this is, again, it's sort of an archetypal example. Um, pop the picture open and then hopefully it'll let me share it. There it comes up. Um, blow it up so you can see it a little better. Beautiful description of medieval Rock'em Sock'em robots. 
The only problem is that this picture was done in the 1800s. The original manuscript was soaked when the roof of a particular scriptorium uh, or library, uh, I'm not sure which one it was, um, but they had a lot of, of medieval manuscripts that were soaked and they tasked a bunch of artists to redraw them. Now, the problem is we have no idea because the original is long gone. Is this what they were actually seeing or is that an interpretation? And that's again, a large problem. We just don't know. We try. Uh, a lot of stuff, if you're using the spectrum as possible, plausible, probable, and proven, most of what we have doesn't go beyond probable, even in the extant items. And in manuscripts and portraits, it is plausible. So be careful if you go to try to do documentation with this kind of thing. Um, there are literary sources, uh, which some of which are just absolutely awesome. And I'm trying to find the right file. Uh, I have a, there are a couple of them, descriptions of Bartholomew babies. Uh, however, this particular description comes is being written about the Renaissance era in the 1800s. And all that she says, what, the hop of my thumb chit with the face of a Bartleby baby? That's all she says. So it's a description, but how much help is that? Not a heck of a lot. Did I actually manage to share that? I'm hoping I did. Okay, so um, next thing, inventories. We find a lot of um, a lot of mention of toys and baubles and dolls in inventories. There's actually a really good study that's up on Academia of uh, Mary Queen of Scots dolls um, or her, and her, I guess we'd call it a cabinet of curiosities. Um, from her childhood. Uh, but it's a basic description. What's it made of? Uh, one doll playing a lute. Okay, what kind of a doll? What kind of materials? Um, we don't really know. And a lot of the pictures in that article are from guesses, uh, extant items that exist elsewhere. Yeah, and then the how chewed up are they? Um, when I was a kid, I, and I managed to close the file that I was looking for just a moment. Uh, I was digging in the backyard, a uh, typical kid making mud pies thing. And part of the yard had been originally a dump and stuff had been, a lot of stuff had, you know, the trash tip, broken stuff, whatever. Uh, but my family had had the property since the 19 teens. Uh, it's where my mom grew up. And when I was digging in the mud, I ran across a couple of hard bits, three pieces. And I chucked them on the porch and they sat out there for a couple of days in the rain. And then my grandfather saw one and he went, well, what on earth is this? And I said, I dug it up out there, pointing at the area that had been the trash tip. And my grandmother picked it up and turned it over and said, oh, these are pieces of Anya, of, uh, Anya Helena's uh, old frozen Charlotte. Now, frozen Charlottes are a particular type of doll that date back to the tail end of the 1800s. Um, but this is what they look like when they're whole. Um, you've probably seen them and thrift shops and stuff. Uh, some people call them cupid dolls. Cupid dolls are another another variation on these. But what I found was apparently part of one leg and foot, the back of the doll, and a chunk from right about here. 
and it probably was very close to this doll. And of course, as soon as we identified it, it went back in the trash can. So I no longer have it. Uh, but it's part of the reason I got involved in archaeology in the first place, doing archaeology in my own backyard. But would that have been recognizable? Would it be recognizable two or three centuries down the road, much less 2,000 years? So that's some of what we're dealing with here. Okay. What is and isn't period? As far as, okay, because when I say period, I'm talking about the Queen Elizabeth, what is that, 1604, all the way back. So that 25,000 year old BCE doll would have been the beginning point of this whole thing. Um, there are good places and I have in your class handout, yes, I'll get to you in just a second. Let, uh, in your class handout, there is a listing of places to look for things. And there's stuff on a couple of my websites that you can hunt through. Uh, for the extant examples, and then a couple of links to places where you can actually hunt them up in museums. Uh, VNA has a really good search function. But beware, doll is not the word people use. Um, doll dates from the early part of the 1800s. People called them puppets, poppets, poopa, baby, taka, moment, uh, and a lot of other names that are, you know, who knows what all. Uh, I think the last time I had a list, I should have put it in this class, but I didn't run across it. Uh, the last time I added any names for doll to a list, there were a little over 200. Um, and now people say fashion dolls, they say Barbie dolls, they say it's a cabbage patch. It's a cabbage patch. You're going to keep a cabbage patch in your bedroom. Um, so it can get very confusing, to put it mildly. Uh, some of the places that you can check on your own are things like portrait books, uh, where you have, uh, like the Holbein portrait books. There are a couple of sketches, actually, of dolls in those. Illuminated manuscripts. I've already talked about the problems, because some of those are not as period as they think they are or as they are purported to be. Um, and some of them are fantasy and most of them don't have a lot of detail, but uh, illuminated manuscripts are a good place to check the marginalia. Uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons have a ton of doll in, uh, pictures. And of course you have to check to see if they're period or not, but okay. Uh, Pinterest also, but again, be aware if you put doll in there, you're going to get several million results. So you might want to try something like Taka or pa Poopa or Baby. Um, but then again, Baby, there's millions of baby pictures too. So it gets to be a problem. Yeah, the finds.org.uk uh, link that is in the handout is an excellent one. And then I already talked about the Bruegel painting, but to be a little bit more specific, there's that playing with dolls that I talked about. There's also a raisin bread man because one of the types of dolls that I don't even have in the listing for today are the edible dolls uh, because those exist particularly in Central Europe where they're made of hard gingerbread. Uh, every Saint's Day, every holiday, kids got dolls. Uh, matter of fact, when I was little, my relatives in Czechia, uh, which at the time was Bohemia, um, excuse me, it was, the Czech, it was Czechoslovakia at that time. Uh, my grandparents came from Bohemia, same area, but, um, and of course now it's the Czech Republic, so. Um, but <laughs> I think my husband is washing the windows. If you hear something very strange in the background, it just, that boggled my head, my mind for a moment. It's like, what's this howling dog? Um, anyway, but uh, they would send every single year a gingerbread figures of various sorts and my absolute favorite the one i insisted on despite my brother's tears were the little knights on horseback um, which were just wonderful and i've made those for my children i actually have a cookie cutter for the horse and then i just use regular gingerbread man and splay him out a little so he'll sit on the horse uh, one of the other places to look for pictures are things like 
chill anytime where you find a picture of children playing like the Bruegel picture there is a procession there and it's a mock baptismal uh, procession and there's a doll instead of a kid when you actually look very very closely and i wish there were some good close-ups online there aren't but when you look very very closely at the picture you can tell that it's basically a rag bundle with a head that's been wrapped around or that's been excuse me let me try that again it's a rag bundle about this tall with a piece of rag wrapped around it to form a head and then it's wrapped in a blanket that's what one of the kids is carrying and there goes the windows again um yeah and then the girls dressing dolls so in the Bruegel painting all right now i want to go through the folders of pictures that i have Hopefully you'll bear with me as it as I go from one to the next. Um, couple more, just sort of starter pictures. Anya, this, yes. I think Kagman oh. had something they wanted to say back. Yeah, she did. I beg your pardon. What what was your and question? Lee is turned off, but there she is. Hi, um, I've been listening. My connection was starting to flake out, and I missed like about two or three minutes of what you said. But if you're, but it's, it cleared up. So if you're recording it, I'll be able to go back in. I just wanted to make that statement because I thought I might have to log out and then see if I could log back in. That's yeah, thankfully, we're being recorded. Good. Unfortunately, I'm not good at being recorded. <laughs> and I but, hope we don't lose you, Kaidman. Yeah. Yeah, it's Kaidman. It's like a long A and uh, like, hey, Cade. And that's fine. You can edit this part out. Thanks. We, I'm going to tell you, I don't edit. I am not proficient at that stuff. So we get what we get. And I hope we don't lose you because after Anya's presentation, everyone's welcome to hang around and share and converse. And yeah. that's when we chit chat. So yeah. hang in there. Okay, thanks. Okie dokie. Uh, can you all see the picture, the woodcut? Yes. Okay, this is a Nuremberg woodcut from very late in period, uh, somewhere in the early 1500s, if I understand right what I read and remember right what I read. Um, and it is a picture of an Italian doll maker. Now, to me, those look like rag dolls, um, but it's one of the pieces of proof that people were doing things of this sort and why it doesn't want to scooch over to the next picture. I don't know, just a moment. There we go. Okay, and then here, blow it back up again, is the doll maker's stand. Uh, you can tell by the outfits that this is right at the tail end of period and actually probably passed uh, because of the doll right in the middle. That's a huge doll, but a lot of these dolls were probably, because of the way they're standing so stiffly, they were probably Bartholomew babies. Now, real quick, I'll, I'll get back to where I was going, but Bartholomew babies are a particular type of doll that usually don't have, uh, they're, they're a piece of turned wood. Um, trying to shut this down so I can show you in the camera. Uh, this was made by Alan, um, but they're vaguely doll shaped and then you put clothes on them and then you maybe put a nose on them and you put a hat, you put hair and they look like those dolls in the picture. So that's a Bartholomew baby. They got the name from the Bartholomew fair and they were around for about a century before they got the name. In other words, they date back to the late 1400s and uh, probably earlier, but that's what we've got evidence for. And they were still being produced and sold in England in the 1800s. So they're a more modern doll, but still pretty cool. Okay, so the mother and child at the toy, uh, toy stall. Then the ca first category of dolls that I'm working with are the clay, metal, stone and wood dolls. 
they, they mostly tend to be very static. This is a Chrysler doll. It's metal. Chrysler, if it hadn't occurred to you, the name is German. Um, and this one, that, Anya. pardon? We're not seeing that. I'm okay. Let me go back in and reshare it. There we go. Should go. Did it come up now? A sort of a very gray metallic doll. Yeah, Got it. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. This is the Chrysler doll. Um, the characteristic is the ruffled headdress that they're wearing. This particular one is metal and it's completely hollow. It was cast, uh, which was pretty typical for relatively cheap toys later in period. Um, a solid doll, or rather one that has a front and back, but it's hollow on the inside, also from Nuremberg. And you can see that the style of clothing is a little earlier uh, with the, the mantle and the veil going down the back. Some more Chrysler dolls and a little knight on horseback. Um, the, and yes, the little guy in the middle comes off the horse and, uh, I've seen some other pictures of this. Unfortunately, they don't allow them to be shared. The museum doesn't. Um, but, uh, yeah, he comes off the, the horse. These are ceramic. Uh, they're solid and they're very small. They're only about four inches tall. Um, another hollow metal figurine. This one was cast lead and it was dug out of the bottom of the Thames. Um, she's wearing what's obviously a later period outfit. You can tell by the uh, four part under the skirt and by the collar and headdress. But and also she wasn't whole when she was found. You can see where the, the bottom uh, was eroded. Another night on horseback, although this guy is on top of a ridge tile. Um, there was apparently a building in, I believe this is England, Bedfordshire, if I remember right. Um, there was a building that had a series of these riding it across the top of the ridge, and there are a couple of sketches of them. But this one survived, and it was actually given to a child as a toy and survived him, which is <laughs> pretty amazing, I think. Another terracotta, although this one dates back to ancient Rome. And you can kind of see by the dress she's got on. This was probably either an actress figurine or an athlete. Uh, but whatever's going on with her hair, I have no idea. Oh, and by the way, the way those shoulders are pinned on, the arms are pinned on, I want you to notice those. I'm going to reference them again later. What now time this period doll, was she? What time was that? Was she? Yeah. Uh, Roman, ancient Roman Empire. Uh, probably right just post the end of the Hellenic Empire as Rome took them over. Whatever century that is. What's that? Right around uh, the year dot, I think. Now this one is carved out of Lindenwood. Um, a doll from Turrigan. You can see she's not complete, but I've got a lot of pictures of her. She's in a, it, it, even the, with, uh, that is not a belt, by the way, that's a measuring piece that's stuck up against her. She's about six inches tall. And you can see in the back that her ruff is simply painted on. Um, again, it's from the side. No real nose, although that, it's possible that was battered loose. And that's the top of her head with her cap with the funny little horns. Um, this doll's kind of important because she shows what people were doing who were middle class, because that's what this is. This is a German middle class outfit. Um, and whoever owned the doll, um, that's where it's from. Okay, that's the last one in this. Okay, in that um, that series, so I make it clear, sort of a tell what I'm going to tell you, tell you, and then tell you what I told you. Those are the ones that are the stump dolls, uh, or excuse me, the, the clay 
of metal wood ceramic dolls. Next, we're coming to the stomp dolls. <laughs> Along with the screeching on the windows. I wonder why he decided he had to do that right now. Okay, stomp dolls modernly are what we call peg, do peg dolls. And uh, Waldorf school particularly, if you look up Waldorf school dolls on uh, Pinterest, you will find a bunch that are rag doll types, but you also find a lot of solid wooden dolls. They're the descendants of the stump dolls that were carved out of a single piece of wood, um, probably a branch, uh, by parents for their children for millennia. Excellent examples, uh, they are just a few. You saw a couple of them, the, the flat uh, Novgorod find dolls, and there's some wooden ones from the Norse record, uh, some in Iceland, um, but only a very few. And this is a Bartholomew baby, a modern Bartholomew baby made by uh, Crossman Crafts in England. Um, he's working off a lot of finds out of the Mary Rose uh, for the Mary Rose Museum. She has a Let's nose. See, can you all see the doll? Pardon? She has a nose. Yes, she does. Um, a lot of Bartholomew babies don't have faces or they have eyes, uh, but he added a nose to this one. Um, here's some more of his. You can see the shapes really vary and they aren't all that particularly human either. There's this Taka that I was talking about before. Uh, German also does have a nose. Does anybody else look at that and think the Scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz? It's the triangular nose. Yeah, and, and bright orange, I guess. Um, but that's, I think, the only extant dressed doll. It's the only extant one I've been able to find, at least. Um, and she's 1500s Germany. This is one of the Icelandic dolls. Let me blow it up so you can see it a little bit. Um, and pretty obviously the face was drawn on there, even if it looks like a number one. Uh, and when you look at it, you uh, at least I went closed pin doll. We still make those, but especially with the legs shaped like that. Uh, to me, that's, that's what it looked like was a closed pin doll. That's what I thought too. I'm going to have to blow them up and minimize them so I can move to the next one. Now, this one is a very old doll. This came out of an Egyptian tomb from the first millennium BC, BCE. And it's a type called a paddle doll. Uh, and they were pretty common in Egypt. And they still are all through the African continent. Basically, it's a, a paddle that a kid can hang on to with very short arms, and then the head is a pom-pom of beads or grass stems or uh, yarn even, um, uh, fiber certainly. Uh, there's one that is fiber from the bast reed, um, which is similar to linen, but it's not as good quality. You can't spin it, it breaks. But it was used as the hair on one of these paddle dolls. Now, a lot of the dolls don't have decoration on them like this. They have symbols. And they may actually be the ancestor of horn books. The, the, the horn, uh, the piece of horn with a handle that had the alphabet on it during the colonial era in, on this continent. Now this, I mentioned these before. These are a pair of stump dolls, sort of, that have had legs added. Whether those were original or not, I don't know. They look like they could be. Originally, they were dated to the Middle Ages and were used as a lot of evidence for this type of doll in the Middle Ages. Don't believe it. They've redated them. They've carbon dated them now. They date to the Queen Anne era, which is, uh, is that Regency or just before? Um, at, at uh, the Queen Anne was like 1650s. 1650s. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I don't have the dates on that. So they really aren't period. You can kind of make a case for they probably had them, but they're definitely in the possible rather even than the plausible category because of the dating. 
The other thing I want you to notice is the earrings. On the left hand doll, she's wearing earrings and they're basically pins driven into her head. Uh, so a fun thing. Oh yeah, and here are some of the, the Novgorod fine dolls, the very flat, uh, why they were done flat, I don't know. It probably has something to do with the characteristics of the wood. But even as battered as they are, they're recognizably toys. Here is a photo, one of the few that we've got in a portrait where the doll isn't clothed but painted. Uh, this is a Bartholomew baby or a Bartholomew baby style. And you can see she has no arms. Uh, there's not really clothing. It's just painted on. Uh, features, the hair might have been added, but it might be wooden and a cap. Um, and people would take these dolls and, whoops, wrong direction, and dress them or not as they wanted. And then here's the one in the portrait. Now, here's some more modern ones. These little guys, by the way, make great largesse. But this is what I'm talking about when I say peg dolls. All they are is a wooden shape and paint. Um, wooden shape, a couple of eyes, probably put on with a marker, judging by the way they've spread and wrapped in felt and decorated. Um, these were on Etsy, and I just thought they were so adorable, I had to save them. Now, here are some of the peg dolls with... Not sure how big this is going to be for you all. You see, hopefully, you can see them a little better blown up. Uh, these are some peg dolls that have drawings on them that are getting ready to be painted. Uh, but you can see the shape. Um, and yes, they come straight sided, and they come. This is these are usually called lady pegs, and the the previous ones are called man pegs. And then there's even little baby pegs. This series are modern, found on Etsy. Look at the arms. See the the pin that goes right through to hang the arms on. Otherwise, these are a taka. They are a stump doll. Um, the this lady, dog on it. Her name's gone away again. I'll find it in a minute. Laura Rossiter, I think maybe. Um, but she does these, and I believe these were found on a largesse page. I think she also does them for Etsy. Uh, but some dressed as Norse some dressed as Norse and medieval. Uh, the knights that I showed showed you earlier for Rich's son. Um, some uh, extra ones on the medieval ones. And these this is definitely fantasy medieval, but it works for a doll because a lot of dolls are fantasy. Um, <clears throat> the By the way, these, the hair, the braids on these guys are a particular type of furniture peg. Uh, that's glued to, their, glued to their heads. I got a kick out of that. And the arms are um, pegs as well. You can see at the bottom where the hands are. That's the point where it's usually driven into the pegboard. And I thought that was an excellent way of taking basic shapes and turning them into dolls. And another photo of them. Yeah, there's the Bartleby baby one. And then this one... Um, Another mention of a Bartholomew baby. Okay, so that's the Pagan Stump Dolls and Taka. And next file is the Fashion Dolls. Nowadays, Barbies are the Fashion Dolls. They're, you know, 12 and a half to 13 inches tall. They come with hair, but they're pretty basic, um, even to the point where you find them in like the dollar store, the dollar twenty-five store. Uh, but they existed uh, in period. Um, this particular one is a chronic picture of a girl with uh, pretty much a, Bar a Bartholomew baby um, that has been dressed. Doesn't appear to have much in the way of arms, just sleeves, but does have added hair and a carved face. So it's been decorated. Your screen sharing oh. stopped. Pardon? Uh, we're not seeing the, the, what you're talking about on the screen share. Oh, I beg your pardon. I think I forgot to hit share. Dumb me again. Sorry. There I we do go. It all the time. It's there's too many buttons. <laughs> anyway, can you see her now? 
Yeah. Um, this is a this is from a very large painting of Christ blessing the children, which was a really popular theme um, in Germany in the mid 1500s, early 1500s. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, there's there's the doll, carved face, added hair, added clothing, but probably a Bartholomew baby type. Okay, next one. Now this one's obviously a Bartholomew baby. And uh, I'm not sure that that helped any, darn it. I thought that was a better resolution picture. But the figure was obviously carved. Um, I don't know whether the hands are an added, whether they were carved into the figure or whether they were added in as fabric, um, but it obviously has an added little cap. Baby portrait, uh, 1537 to 1614, Klaes von Schwanenberg. There, there's my button. Okay, and a little kiddo, very little kiddo. Uh, Catherine Renata of Austria, 1577. And if you look at her right hand, that's not Bartholomew baby. It's a rag baby. See the way it's bent like that with the arms? Um, they were they were also used as fashion dolls. Uh, as a matter of fact, they were even being used in the Regency era as fashion dolls um, because the wooden dolls tended to break and the ceramic ones broke even faster. So uh, dressmakers, fashion dressmakers, took to using rag dolls to dress uh, in samples. And of course, the, the fabrics and stuff were the wrong weight, whatever. Now, this is Arabella Stewart. Uh, when she was aged 23 months, apparently it's 1577, um, with a very fancy dress doll that appears to be rather stiff. So it probably has a wooden armature underneath, whether it's jointed or whether it's simply solid, it is hard to tell. Um, another very solid, obviously fashion doll. One of the things that you see a lot is that the fashion dolls in children's hands and portraits are a decade or two out of style compared with their clothing. And that's exactly the case in this particular portrait, which is from about 1682, it looks like. Uh, Louise Juliana of Orange, Nassau. Um, the doll is much older. So it probably started as a fashion doll in the hands of a fashionable tailor or seamstress, and then was passed on to become a child's toy, maybe to a favorite customer. I could see me doing something like that. Here's another maybe rag doll, but maybe jointed. Those arms look a little stiff for a rag doll. See what I mean? Uh, but she's actually got feet. If you look very closely at the picture, there are feet at the bottom there. So it's quite possible this doll has those pins at the shoulder, has a jointed elbow, has jointed hips, and jointed knees. Uh, yes, they were doing that. There are some extra, extant puppets that have all those joints. It's possible this was made by a puppet maker. Um, the, the lines cross a lot. And another young lady, this one right here, with a very stiff looking doll, um, dressed again, a little out of fashion, maybe 10 years or so. And of course, her sisters are holding the fertility symbol and the fidelity symbol. So three young girls, uh, 1620, 1619, something like that. They're not exactly sure what the date is on these. The clothes are earlier than the picture, um, it, than, than the uh, 1619 date, but they think that's when the picture was actually painted. Um, another little girl, a basket of cherries for love and faithfulness and a doll. Uh, this one appears to have a short skirt and feet, which is kind of interesting. And I swear she looks like Frankenstein with little buttons on her hat. <laughs> Another stiff doll and cherries, uh, Catherine von Warmont, 1596, right at the tail end of period. What do these symbolize again? 
I'm not hearing. Oh, what do the cherries symbolize again? Uh, fi well, fidelity for one, prosperity for another, and love. Okay, thank uh, you. Passionate love, actually. Um, mm -hmm. When the, when the, the uh, I'm trying to, not archetypal, I'm trying to think of the, the, the right name for it. I'm sorry, it's gone away. But when these symbols show up in the portraits, it's because they're trying to brag on their kid. You know, oh, she's going to be fertile. She's going to be prosperous. She's going to be loving. So, again, the gown is a little earlier period than what the kid is wearing. So, maybe a fashion doll. And this one, wow, early. Uh, very, very early 1500s kid is, this is the sister of Archduke Charles, who was the Holy Roman Emperor, the, uh, Charles V. And um, her doll is about two decades earlier than, her, than that. Okay, any questions on fashion dolls while I'm pulling up the next file? Yeah, I was just wondering if with the dolls being so out of step with the fashions, is it possible that they were family heirlooms, like they were the mother or the grandmothers, and then they were passed down, but they didn't change the clothes? Oh. Yes, that's, I would say that's entirely possible. Um, I don't think it, that ever shows up in the records anywhere, but I haven't gone far enough into wills and uh, inventories to be sure. I know that some toys were passed down, particularly things like the um, semi-precious stone gold and silver balls. Uh, those were often passed down and were listed in wills. But I'm not sure on the dolls. I'd have to go and hunt that up. Because some of those clothes look really, really fashionable, like they were at the height, the height of fashion at some point. So the yeah. fact that they kept them on the doll mint could potentially mean that they were really expensive and then it was just passed mm -hmm. down without changing them mm -hmm. because it would be a waste of fabric otherwise. That yeah. would explain, yeah, I, th yeah. I think that would more easily explain why the, why they were so out of step with the, with the children. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it is entirely possible, but it is also, it, it's one of, this is one of those speculative things. Sure, sure. Which way? And it probably happened both ways because we know that the fashionable tailors and seamstresses uh, had this type of doll. And that's what gave its name to fashion doll. Um, and there being a couple of decades out of step could mean that they were passed on when they were no longer fashionable. Or it could mean, as you say, that they were passed down. And that's a place that needs more research. Um, okay, jointed dolls. I wanted to show you some ex really nice examples. This is an ivory doll from uh, late Roman era. And it was found, it's a catacomb find. It was buried with a little girl. Um, and the clothes were with it, but they disintegrated. Um, at least they're fairly certain that's what the pile of raggy stuff was. And they cleaned the figurine up. And of course, now it's in a museum without all the stuff so that we can find out what she was actually wearing. Arg. But a couple things to notice. Those shoulders may be pinned on, but they're not. That primitive pin where it, it sticks through and sticks out, they're very carefully jointed at the elbows and knees and at the hips. That is a really sophisticated join right there. Um, and I wanted you also to notice the pointy feet because Barbie dolls have still got them. <laughs> <laughs> and that just tickles me every time I see that. Uh, another one, uh, not quite as carefully put together, but apparently this one they had to put back together. Um, it was in pieces, but, and it doesn't have the jointed elbows, just shoulders and those, the pieces right here under the bust line are there to keep the arms from going, if, uh, dropping backwards. They're actually a support. Uh, they're not part of the original doll, but again, the pointy feet. These are some Greek theater dolls. Um, they have jointed arms but otherwise they're fastened to those chairs. They were apparently used in, let me blow it up a little bit. They were used in theater productions 
to symbolize certain things about a scene change. Now, what I'm not really certain, I, I, rem I was told that I need to, that's another one I need to do more research on. Another beautiful jointed doll. This one, we've got the back view. Look at her hair. Look at that. That's gorgeous. And she's made out, again, out of ivory. Um, and this odd sort of bit here under her butt. <laughs> I had a kid in one of the classes ask me if she was give, having a baby. Uh, but that's what the legs are pinned to. Uh, you can actually see the pin right here under her hand. And again, the itty bitty pointed feet. Can you enlarge that? I can try that. Let's see what I can do. Which part are you looking for? The feet? There's the feet. Actually, the hair. <laughs> All right. Coming back. Coming right up. There's the hair. Uh, and that is very okay. much a Roman hairstyle. With the, the rolls that have had fabric added to them, uh, then they're all tucked in under each other, and then there's a bun at the very back. Oh, and you can also see where the shoulder was pinned in place. This is another one which I believe was partially disassembled. Um, I don't, I'm not 100% certain, but I think so. I think that is a new add to it. Okay? Question. On the joints. I still like the fact that her butt is so carefully carved. Oh, I hear somebody speaking. Who is, who's yeah, that? It's me, Cademan. Can you hear me now? Uh, no, <laughs> I can hear that you're speaking, but I can't hear you, what you're saying. Can you hear me now? Ah, a little better. What is wrong with my system? Um, was glue used in the construction of these uh, joints? Were these joints possibly, uh, I know some of them were pinned, were some of them pegged and glued? Is there someone who has a better speaker who can translate for me? Oh, what is wrong? She wanted to know if they, were, if they were pegging, she wanted to know if they were pegging glued um, or if it was simply um, glued. I believe they're pegged. Um, I don't know whether there's glue involved or not for certain. I do know that in the next picture, there is glue involved, but this one, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Um, this one, which is just out of period, uh, is a really good example of an English doll uh, from, the, from the 1600s. Okay, it's, it's out of period. Um, these dolls showed up as over the, the next couple centuries as things like peddler dolls, but initially they were dressed like upper class ladies. Um, the obviously very carefully painted, but you can see that the body was not. Now this one, if you look right here, there is a peg that goes right through, but it was driven in with glue and then the legs worked to keep it from seizing up while the glue was drying. Uh, they know that because on the back of this particular doll's elbow, there's a big blodge of glue uh, that actually prevent right here that prevents the arm from going all the way back in. They're not certain whether that was done on purpose or whether, because this one goes all the way in or whether it was just an accident. But again, um, and then this one, the, the knee is damaged. That piece wouldn't have been there originally. It's broken off of the uh, original. But I think it's kind of interesting that the, again, the pointy feet. Um, you can, oh, and this one also has an earring, uh, at pointy least one. Feet. You think they have shoes? Uh, they're painted on. Uh, let's see if I can get it to come up. You see them? See them around the edges of the feet? Yes, just marginally. Yeah. That's really all they ever are. They're a, a, a guess. Oh, she does have two earrings. See them? Now that she's blown up, it's a little more obvious. Yeah. And those are pieces of wire that were basically driven through the wood. They drilled a hole, put a piece of wire in, and hung a bobble off it for an earring. Um, okay. This is one a picture off of Crossman Crafts and why it's staying way it is, I don't know. 
he has this one tied together. I'm sorry, it's not coming up as a regular picture. I don't know why, because it is in my computer, but it certainly isn't in this particular file. Um, I mean, let me back up and see if it'll sort out. If I, well, no, it didn't. The main reason I put this one in here is that Peter ties his. Uh, and this apparently was a common thing in dolls way back. Um, you run, you drill the holes, you run a piece of cord through, you knot it, and then trim off the knot. And of course, kids, kids don't really care. You know, they don't have to be that realistic. Um, but he based this one off of a Mary Rose find, and he said that it's exactly the same shape as one of the terracotta dolls from ancient Greece. Um, different face is all, but otherwise they could be the same doll. So, okay. Uh, here, this is to show you the shoulder pin. Just a moment. This is, this one is tied. That is a knot in that little hole in the shoulder. Uh, this is, again, ancient Rome. I believe this one was found in, I think that's in a, Egypt. Creparia trephena. I don't know. I think that's Egypt. But I put that one in there for the knot. Um, here's another one that was found in, I love the disproportionate portion of the hands and the face. Uh, this was a, a found in a mummy, uh, second century. That's the face of the doll. Um, and that's the whole doll. Obviously similar construction. And again, those Queen Anne dolls. That okay. The doll that was found with the mummy, is that wooden? Yes. Yeah, you can tell by the grain. Most of the dolls that still exist are not wooden from that time frame, but there are a few. Uh, the, the catacomb finds are all either uh, bone, ivory, or terracotta, uh, but mummies occasionally, because Egypt is so dry, uh, the mummy finds and the crypt finds occasionally are uh, wooden, and they have to be very carefully climate controlled. Um, this shape around the doll is the support, by the way, uh, so that it isn't, it doesn't have to support itself. Uh, they're very good about the way they've got it supported. I can see the supports because I know where they put them, but you can only kind of see like evidence of it right there. They're sort of holding it off of itself so it doesn't disintegrate. And like I said, that's the Queen Anne dolls. Okay, that's per that particular category. The jointed dolls. Okay, now here are some rag dolls, and um, there are a few more over in the in another section. But I wanted to show you the period ones, and so you see it. This is one of mine that I've done. It's a um, commercial uh, rag doll, not a not one that I stitched. Um, but they work beautifully for largesse. So let me get this up and running. Um, Brad it. There, come on. This first one here is made of rag and thread. Obviously, it's not an incredibly lifelike doll. Um, but this one is, again, it's Egyptian uh, catacomb find, not catacomb, uh, uh, tomb find. Uh, it was not wrapped in with a mummy, uh, but the linen strips that are on the surface of it were probably originally clothing. Actually, let me blow that one up for a second. Oops. Ah. There, can you see it a little better? Um, it was rag that was bound to create legs and feet, which is not something we do now. We just take scraps and cut it out. But you can also see the binding on the arms. 
Okay. And the next one. And this one is rushes with a carved head and real hair. Um, it apparently had garments with it. They are no longer on the doll. Um, 590 BC to 10, 1070 BC, somewhere in there. We can see the hair, the texture of the hair, and how they did the body. I don't know. Um, someone suggested that this one may have been shoved into a mold because apparently they were doing that with rush pulp, kind of like we do paper pulp. Another rag doll and papyrus stuffing made in one piece and it's Dynasty 12, which is 795 BCE to 1985 BCE. So this one's pretty old. Um, again, you can see the binding and probably this, these bits here are part of the clothing, but it's hard to tell anymore and har even harder to tell from a photo. That's one I have not laid eyes on. Now this one, burial of a child in the Roman center cemetery at Hawara, Egypt, fourth century CE. A little bit more realistically shaped and you can see how the boobs were created. Um, it seems to be a fairly coarse linen fiber that is stuffed with something. And this is grass fiber of a particular, or grass rush, of a particular rush that grows in the marshes in Egypt, and then the cord and so on. Um, the, the red here is just cord. This is just cord, but these other four layers here are braids. Now this is the one that is considered to be the best documented of the rag dolls. You find it all over the place when you look for rag doll, ancient Egypt, ancient Rome. Um, it is a panel of fabric that was cut and turned to make the main part of the body. And then the neck was wrapped. Uh, the arms appear to have slid. Um, there are scraps of the same fiber inside this joint as there are right here. So, and they're of a different fiber from the rest of the doll. So they think that the, originally the arms were located right here under the shoulders. But this is two pieces with sort of a, a split uh, to go over the head. So they would probably jam fit onto the neck um, and not stitched into place. But it's also one of the best preserved for an actual rag doll. Okay. That must be the last one in that set. Yeah. Um, and I have, I have some more in the Our Projects folder, which is last. Oh, it's not the last one. Just a second. There's one more. If I can get it to come up. All right, there's the share screen fighting me. And I will blow it up as soon as I get it here. There we go. This is from a festival costume. But these are dolls. You know that flat metal doll that I said was hollow in the back? That's exactly what these are. See that even the shape of the arms? but they're dressed and they're hanging off of a festival costume as little tassels. I thought that was really kind of cool, mostly because the last time when I was actually in the Czech Republic in 1992, there was a Christmas parade as they were putting up the main tree. We were there for the Christmas markets, which was wonderful. But the Christmas parade, one of the people was wearing little plastic dressed <laughs> baby dolls all over her dress, the same way this dress was created. I thought that was an interesting lineup. Okay, so the rag doll paper. Okay, paper dolls. Believe it or not, there's an almost 
period paper doll. They did not truly exist in period. <coughs> Apparently nobody thought of it until just out of period. And you can look at the outfits and say, oh yeah, a little out of period, look at the hair. Especially, whoop, it probably helps if I use the cursor and not my finger, especially right here. And this top, I call it a Spencer, I'm not sure that that's the right name for it in period. Uh, but that little jacket there with and the hair that is just out of period but this is indeed a paper doll um, it's in a german in a german museum i believe nuremberg again and what time um, period again was that uh 1625 somewhere somewhere centering around there this is a Thank black you. and black and white version of it and i kept it for the uh Provenance, Nuremberg, Germanisches National Museum, Grafische Sammlung, um, basically a, a printed piece. Um, paper, yeah. So that's our paper dolls for period. In other words, they aren't. Uh, but people, because they're cool, <laughs> make them. Anglo-Saxon, Viking dress, although Somehow, I don't think the Viking would be wearing the bikini. I haven't seen any evidence for those. Okay. Next segment here. Let's see, that was paper. Oh, corn grass and yarn dollies. Now, this is one that I spent about four years working on, and I found no evidence. They're plausible, but all of those people, particularly from the modern neo-pagan movement, who tell you, oh yes, they go back to prehistory. Well, maybe they do. There's no proof of it. Not anywhere. Um, I got told, oops, and that's not the right thing to share. Oh dear. I'm sorry. I'm fumbling with the buttons. Um, I got told by a lot of people that these are very, very period. Uh, grass dolls, corn dollies, um, and that they go back to prehistory. And I also got told by another bunch of people that the only reason that there's no evidence is because they tore them up at the end of the harvest season or at the end of the winter. Uh, the tradition in England of teaching the corn how to grow by taking the last, the last sheep of the previous har harvest and scattering it in the fields. Um, no. That particular one does not date back to prehistory. There's no evidence of it before about the 1700s. Um, but a lot of people want to see them. So uh, this is a modern corn dolly. And when I say corn, I do mean corn husk. Uh, and this is corn silk up here. Those are made now as folk tradition dolls all over Central Europe and, of course, in the United States. This is more like a if there were a period style corn dolly, where it's got leaves for clothing and the stems are braided to make the doll. Let me blow that up so you can actually see it and then squinch it down so I can get the next picture. Um, part of the reason why these even come up in something that's about period dolls is because Corn dollies and grass dollies would be utterly, utterly ephemeral. They're not going to leave any evidence. Um, if, if they did, it would be in a midden. And if it hadn't completely rotted away, who's going to be able to tell it's a doll? Especially looking at the doll that this little girl is holding. Well, she believes it's a doll. I think it's a doll because she says it's a doll. But... That's another one of those things where somebody's going to be digging in the midden, go right through it, and go, it's junk, toss it. This, however, is a grass doll, grass made into cord and beads and chains and buttons, This and a, a bit of semi-precious stone uh, that was made actually in the, just the past century around a wooden core. And it's a fertility doll. 
uh, there is some evidence of this style of doll going way back, but there's no extant doll that looks like this. There's just people talking about it. This one has a little bit more, it's not exactly a grass doll, but it's a doll in grass, grass clothing. And that's a Kokishi doll, which is modern. Uh, or at least it's not period. They go back almost to, and that style of stump doll, yeah. But what I found interesting was the rain cloak, because that's what that is. It's recognizably a rain cloak, which were made out of grass and reeds. Um, so anyway, I thought that was interesting, grass clothing. Now here's one of the things that people call corn dollies, modern, uh, apparently the style goes back to the early 1900s and not a whole lot farther. Actually, could you all actually see that? Let me blow it up. You see the shape and people call that a dolly. Okay. Um, but those are, are made all over the British Isles. And I know there are more. There's the thing. Anya? Here's one. Pardon? In the chat, there's some discussion of uh, maybe a, a definition again of what a corn dolly is. Okay. Modern corn dollies are fertility figures from the harvest that are made of barley, wheat, or maize. Uh, uh, <laughs> like Laura's corn cob doll. Uh, and, and they're made in generally in a certain style. Um, where you take a bundle and fold it in half, maybe with a tie at the top, and then stick another bundle through the middle and tie above and below it. Uh, sometimes the bundle at the bottom is divided in two and tied, so it makes a little guy or it makes legs. Um, that's a corn or grass dolly. And when I say fertility figure, and the corn dollies as, they're, as part of the harvest and commented about, about from a lot of the neo-pagans, those are very, very stylized to the point where um, this one does not really resemble a doll to me at all. Um, that's probably not a dictionary definition, that's a functional definition, but is that sufficient, you think? Okay, back to again, ephemeral dolls. This one is a buffalo grass doll. Uh, it was at the Drywater Indian store in Salisaw, Oklahoma. And I saw it, and I went, yeah, that's an archetypal grass doll. There's a beautiful description of those in one of the Little House prequel books, the Carol and Quiner years where the little girls collect up stuff to make grass dolls, taking long grass and tying it. But again, they're very ephemeral. This one has the grass uh, underpinnings. You can see the arms. The hair is made of the uh, the bits at the top of the grass, the, the little tassels, the pollen tassels, and braided, and then it was dressed. But like I said, this is a modern doll in that style. Now these are another type of grass doll. And these are honest to goodness grass. Uh, they're a fertility figure, healthy mama grass doll um, made. You can see where the bundle is shoved through that grass wasn't turned over, but it was split at the bottom into. And these are what people think of normally when they think of grass dolls. That's also the shape for a yarn dolly, which as far as I can tell, the earliest are Victorian. Um, yarn doll, string doll. Okay, that section. Did I give you enough of a definition to work with? I think that covered it. Nobody's asked any further questions okay. on it. Okay. But so are you saying that uh, Native Americans didn't like make corn dolls before like colonization? Because I, I thought that they had, had those for a long time. They may very well have done it, but there's no evidence. Um, the, the grass dolls, like that buffalo grass doll, the first evidence for it, even in literature, 
is uh, basically after the Caucasian stomp through. Um, the uh, before that there were leather dolls and some carved dolls among the Inuit that we have still. Um, but like the Plains Indians, apparently they were working with more like Susan, you know, the corn cob and a handkerchief type doll, uh, make a doll out of something that then gets used for something else. Um, that's the only descriptions there were. And of course, the during the Caucasian stomp through, very few people were interested in what the kids played with. Um, so it's real there's really almost no evidence uh which i find to be quite a shame i'd love to know um i've talked to some of the people at warm springs and they said that they don't have any idea even the ones who've gone and studied the history um they don't have any idea what people had before the uh europeans showed up um Unfortunately, not quite enough of the history got saved. And the day-to-day -day stuff, uh, even more so than in other places, especially with children. So Alan yeah. has offered some thoughts. Uh -huh. um, he was one of those asking about porn definition. And he said, uh, maze was the word Europeans used for what we call porn today. Exactly. And Corn used to mean any grain. So any it could grain. be that exactly. the phrase corn dolls would have referred to any doll made of grass right. or those kinds of harvest grains. Yeah. Those ephemeral dolls. Yeah. Uh, did the person who was looking for the class handout find the find the link? I'm not sure who that was. I saw it and then I lost it. I believe that was done earlier. Okay, good. All right, uh, just, a couple more, just a couple more sections here. Um, if I can get my button to open up, there we go. Puppets. Beautiful illuminated manuscript version of just the cutest little puppet theater. And with the guy holding a slapstick, that almost has to be some variation on a Punch and Judy show, at least <laughs> to my eye. Um, they do go back, there are descriptions of what we would call puppet shows back in ancient Rome. I don't think they go back to ancient Greece because Greece was doing most of their theater in the uh, Dionysian temples, um, the temple theater civic thing. They weren't doing more in the marketplace. As far as we know, as far as I've found. Um, this is one of the earliest puppet theaters I've seen. And the figures in it, judging by what little I can see of them, are probably stick figures, which don't move. Or they might move, the arms might move or something like that. These are still used all over the place. Um, there is more evidence early on in the Orient. That has not been my field of study, so I'm not... 100% certain, um, I'm moving this around. This is the other puppet theater. And they do look like Rock'em Sock'em robots, but it's a similar type of, of theater with the drape for the operator. And if you have knights on a stick like that, even if they're solid, they don't move, you can swirl them back and forth between your hands and they whack the bleep out of each other. Uh, my kids had some puppets that they did that with. And they had all kinds of fun with it. And that's the Rock'em Sock'em Robots picture. The one I used earlier is an example of what isn't period as far as we know. Uh, but that's the closest we've got to those. And then there's one more here. If I can get the thing to shrink to where I get my cursor back. There we go. This is the oldest documented puppet marionette style puppet in the documentation from what is now the Czech Republic. It dates to Poofy Pants era, um, right at the beginning of the Elizabethan 
uh, era, so 1550 to 1575, maybe up to can 16. Can you enlarge that? Uh, I can try. Okay, there you can see the pictures a little better. There you can see the puppet. Let me move this up so I can see if I can go farther. Can you see him now? Um, yes. The little the little figurine here in poop pants with great big, I, they call them duck feet. And apparently it was a motif in the Czech comedy of the time. But you can actually see the strings here and the handle by which this little guy was manipulated. Um, this is the guy's hand wrapping around him. Um, I find those really fascinating, at least in part, because I spent some time in 92 in one of the puppet theaters and the shop behind the puppet theater. Uh, and doggone, if they aren't made the same way. You know, we always have that crisscross that we think of to control the, the puppets. Uh, even those little walking birds have a two cross sticks at the top. They weren't doing it that way. They were using two hands and a a button um, for the for anything that had to move on the figure other than the legs. Uh, usually it was for a mouth, and because the button has four strings, and you manipulate the the mouth with one of them and the hands with the other two, and then strings in your other hand so you can make it walk. Um, they showed me how it's a tremendous amount of fun. One of these years, I'm going to get my puppet made and I'll be able to show everybody. Um, I've had it cut out for almost four years now <laughs> and I haven't gotten it hooked together. Um, but that's the oldest, oldest evidence for marionettes. Stick puppets, and I could go way, way, way into this because puppets are their own field of endeavor. Um, but uh, basically stick puppets and figures on sticks uh, go way back um, in period. But marionettes aren't until later. And I believe the word is actually, actually out of period, although I could be wrong. Uh, if, if, you, if you find out, contradict me, please. Um, okay, so that's sort of the main part of it. And I wanted to show you a few projects that House Capuchin has done or I have done for mostly for largesse, but also for just general SCA cool. Um, I usually have a doll or a ball or something on me to hand to a cranky kid. So, okay, this first picture, can you all see it now? Oh, bunnies? Bunnies, yes. I used ragdoll bunnies and I put <laughs> little heraldic tabards on them. Oh, you see summits and on tier, and this one's a house capuchin, although you can't see it. But they were little tiny bunnies. I wish I could still get them. Apparently, everybody sold out of them. Um, I, I had bought the bunnies something like 20 years earlier. There, there was a guy, um, we used to call him Christopher Biohazard. I think his SCA name is uh, Christopher Ward from the Barony of Dragonsmist, um, who used to do puns with the little ragdoll bunnies. And I made some bunnies at the time with little tabards that had some of his worst puns on them, which is what gave me the idea for this. <laughs> and this was, um, you know, the, the whole house worked on them. They're not just my work, they're my design. Um, another style of, these are peg dolls. See them right in the spang in the middle all dyed a simple color and they came with a matching bag, sort of a family. The And the reason I saved this out was to show you the man peg, the woman peg, and the baby peg. The one, the woman peg is sometimes called an angel peg, by the way, if you go to buy some. And I think I have the links, maybe, I think I have the links in your class handout for where to find them at Casey's Wood Products, which is my supplier. Uh, they're back east, they do really nice stuff and they're not expensive. But <coughs> these are really, really simple. Um, about as simple as you get. And these are probably much closer to the majority of these type of dolls that people had in period. 
uh, rather than the fancy ones that we see later on. And yeah, those were large ass. That's a lot of sets of dolls. Um, here are a couple of rag dolls, the one for large S, a pair with eyes and one without. Uh, those are commercial um, dolls uh, in the more modern style where they don't have the arms split and jam fit over the head. Uh, but they're all a cut out piece. And then we dressed them. Uh, and if anybody wants info on how to do that, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you about that. These are some peg dolls that we dressed for large S. That's why they have little tags on them. Just because we wanted to have fun. And they're a piece of felt cut with a rolling cutter, glued around a man peg, tied with a ribbon. And they have some of the other ones had bells or flowers. Uh, this was the, these, this happened to be the picture that I ran across. And they all had little caps, some of which matched, some of which didn't. Um, and then glued on bows. Uh, obviously simple. There's no arms. There's no nothing. Um, but it's a toy. It's a doll. Another picture of one of the, that was my favorite of all of the ones I made, which is, and she went to a little four-year-old for her birthday. Aww. And she still has her, apparently, even though she's a teenager. She sits on her shelf now. Um, another one. Oh, and here, this is the shape of the dresses. They're just nothing but T-tunics. Um, very simply stitched. Um, and then the neckline was had glued on uh, that the pearls on a string type stuff. Um, I also have, if you want to know how to do the wigs, um, I also have photos of that. I can give them to you later or get them to you later. And another stack of them. Um, somebody else did, did finish these. Uh, and so the hair looks a little different. She used yarn, same type of wig, but still used yarn. And then she gave them bells. Um, this was another one, a peg doll. This was the picture that we used as the come on for the class. Uh, these are the little woman pegs and they have a little French hood, which is nothing but a piece of felt. And if you look at it very clear, closely, that's glitter glue on the outside. Some They all have veils down the back were some scraps of a silk veil that I had. Um, and, you know, uh, to make a French hood out of it. And then the little ruffs, these haven't gotten their ruffs yet. Uh, but the little ruffs are a printed fabric in a black work design that was just folded over and, uh, you know, to make the, what do you call it, the rough, and then tied. And you can see this one hasn't gotten this, the threads tied off yet. Uh, that, that eventually, when I did it, was this part was, this part with the strings in it was turned around to the back and everything was glued in place. And uh, those were 2014 or so. I have not never heard of anybody who got one. And I'd really love to know where they went. Because uh, we made hmm, about 40 of them, I think. At least three dozen. Um, but you can do a lot with simple stuff. Simple shapes. And that was why I really wanted to keep these in here. Okay, I think that must be the last one of those and let's see if I have anything else just double check um no that's really the pretty much the the most of the lecture so we got questions um Alan I did show some of your Bartholomew babies these are the ones that are still here waiting for people to pick up um let me stand them up on my act and get an actual picture. Um, we talked about those with this in the stump doll thing. Yeah, Alan, Alan Boyer, who is here apparently, uh, turned these and off of, I think you used the, uh, the template that I gave you. I have a turning template. It's up on the, the website. Um, along with the, uh, uh, the, the stump doll stuff uh, should be able to be findable. And he made them multicultural 
And he also made them multiple shapes. I mean, this lady has got a lot going for her upstairs and this one sure doesn't. So, you know, you, that's, um, that, I don't know how to say that and be politically correct about it. That's the close, closest I can get. Uh, but this is a variety and with some of them with the very square heads and some of them with more rounded heads. And that's the way they would have shown up in period. Um, uh, so did, did you see the, if you didn't see the documentation, Alan, I'll go back and show you. I didn't, I don't have as much on the Bartholomew babies in here yet. Um, as I probably should more mentions under other categories, but I'm going to add a number 10 in, of my notes, uh, note, uh, picture files is going to become Bartholomew babies. And then 11 will be the projects file. Um, just haven't gotten that far yet. No one sent me any pictures back who took some. I know that a couple of people have told me they haven't had a chance to work on them. And of course I left mine home. <laughs> the ones that I had started to dress. I was telling, I guess I was telling Ilantha earlier that um, I have one that I have finished a smock for. I have to gather it to her neck, but it's a smock and then the hands are beads attached at the end of the sleeves. And I'm making a Spanish coat, a very plain Spanish coat to go over the smock. And I'll probably make a four part too. I apparently have a scrap of something pretty that uh, my husband found. And if I don't, I have some of the fabric that I like and I use in a lot of my Renaissance clothing. Um, someone says, I thought corn dolls were a Native American thing. They apparently are not. Uh, that was what I was saying earlier. Um, the, there's no evidence. Um, and even people who've studied their own history, like the people from Warm Springs, said there's no evidence. Uh, not before Europeans got out here. They were using dolls, but not corn dollies and not the ones that were made with uh, the corn leaves um, either. They were making more grass dolls originally. And Fureleaf, yeah, um, the, they were intended as a type of ritual artifact. Yes, um, that's what everybody says. And that is certainly the way they are used now and probably have been since the cunning man, cunning men, and cutting women started up in England. That's where we've got the best documentation, but those are 1600s, they're out of period. And contrary to what a lot of neo-pagans will tell you, there's no evidence before that, that I've found. Um, Bartholomew babies, yeah, they're very late period. There were stump dolls of that style as quite a ways back, but they were mostly carved um, rather than turned. And so, but they seem, the Bartholomew baby style doll seems to go almost as far back as turning goes. Um, apparently they were quite popular. I don't know for sure, Alan, if you find more on that. The Bartholomew baby name, yes, that is absolutely late period and out. Uh, and we looked at some fashion dolls that were probably originally Bartholomew babies. Let me go back in and pull that one up so that you can see it. Where is she? There we go. Little, little lady with the cherries. I'm trying to share it. Share screen button went away. There we go. This lady. The doll in her hand is almost certainly a Bartholomew baby style. And she's uh, from the 1560s, dating by the picture. So yeah, there's your late Tudor era. Alan, do you not have a microphone on, or or are you muted to, or something? Apparently, don't have a microphone. Okay. Generally, if he uses the mic, it kind of overdoes his system. So. Ah. Okay. St. Bartholomew Fair in Smithfield, London. Nothing <clears throat> remains of the fair today, alas, yes. Oh, yeah. uh, that is all, oh. they were also a fixture at 
the St. Audrey's Fair, which is the one, the fair from which we get the word tawdry. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Both. <clears throat> Oh, Both Tawdry and uh, Bartholomew Baby uh, yeah. were used as insults. If somebody is <clears throat> addressed far too fine for an occasion, they were called a Bartholomew Baby. <clears throat> and if somebody mm -hmm. had been drinking too much, they'd again be called a Bartholomew Baby because the Bartholomew's Fair was notorious for, you know, <clears throat> outra outrageous <laughs> behavior. It was also used as an insult for young women and women if, who were rather ugly uh, because the dolls oh, were so flat faced and funny looking. <laughs> um, yeah. And actually that one uh, was still going in the Regency era. Um, it apparently started up right along with the word tawdry in the late 1500s. And um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we saw a couple of, I have a couple of clips about Bartle me babies uh, from just just out of period, uh, a little um, clips of literature that we had in there. But the funny thing is, I should probably have sent this to you. I, I think I might have. <clears throat> One source said that people would travel from all over England to go to London to this fair. <clears throat> they would buy dolls with the latest fashion and then take the dolls back home. And when they got back home, they would turn to their seamstress and say, I want something that looks like this. Exactly. And we were talking about that with the fashion dolls um, earlier. Um, and uh, the, whether there's a, a proper dividing line between thing, ones that were toys and one that were samples. Um, and actually, that was in context with the fact that the fashion dolls in the portraits uh, seem to be a couple of decades off in terms of uh, the fashions that they're wearing. So either the dolls were handed over to kids to play with or sold as toys or possibly handed down. That was a suggestion that was made that they had been toys that belonged to family members and were handed down. Um, okay, anybody have any questions? more i was kind of interested in the kokeshi dolls but you mentioned that they're out of period so it doesn't really matter <laughs> well um the, it's the style that is out of period the fact that they're a peg doll or a stump doll um almost certainly is they almost certainly go back but again i haven't studied them quite as well i know there is a toy museum in japan and they do have stuff that is online. Um, I am fairly certain that's where that picture originally came from, but I found it on Pinterest and didn't follow the links back. Sure. You might try uh, grabbing the picture. I'll, I'll send it to you, let's see. Okay. Um, are you on Facebook? Yeah, you're on Facebook. Yeah, no. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to find you. Um, Actually, could you see if you can find me on Facebook and remind me that that's the picture you want? Because sure. you could probably do a reverse Google, a reverse image Google search on it. Okay. Um, so, uh, what I know of that style of doll is I have seen, I don't have examples because my focus was Europe, sure. mostly. Um, uh, I started way before the SCA actually did anything outside of Europe. And I think that's kind of crunched my focus down. I need to go farther. Um, I thought that particular one of the the, Iceland, the uh, Icelandic doll, the Skraelings, no, Skraelings are not Icelandic, are they? Skraelings are the nor Northern Scotland? Anyway, uh, but the, what the Skraelings thought of the Norse, I thought that one was exotic, <clears throat> sorry. Um, but I know that the stump dolls go all the way back. <coughs> the problem is finding evidence. And there may be some in the Japanese and Chinese museums that I have not run across. But stump dolls, they're kind of like wooden balls or leather balls. Um, they're, they don't stay in the record unless somebody's dumped one in a trash tip and then it's recognized, kind of like that. 25,000 year old leather doll that got trash canned. Um, 
the that's so much of that has happened. Um, shoes, actually, the funny the, there was a funny one with that just recently. I saw on one of the the English British news feeds somebody was digging in a trash heap junkyard. They were going to take it all to the sanitary landfill, and they ran up ran into a Renaissance shoe. That's been dated to the Renaissance era. And apparently it's being donated to the VNA. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. 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 So much of it. And you know, that that's why I've got that and, and it's hung up above my desk, if you wonder where I keep looking at it. Uh, that possible, plausible, provable probable and proven. That's why I've got that spectrum up there. Um, I probably also should add to that perioid, um, like those, the stump dolls that the, uh, the lady made with the, with the arms, the painted ones, those are perioid. Uh, they're not provably period, but they're something that could have been done and they certainly work in the SCA or in recreation stuff. Um, I first ran into that one when I was working one summer as a docent at Williamsburg because I had been fascinated by the peddler dolls, which are a little bit later than the Williamsburg period that they're working in. Um, they, they really belong to the 1700s and Williamsburg is 16, 1700s, but yeah. Um, and we had a doll that Everything looked right, and it was in the displays as being an original Williamsburg find. And it turned out it was a reproduction from um, Massachusetts, the, okay. the, the uh, oh, whichever group that is up there. Uh, but it, had been, it was a reproduction, and somebody bought it and donated it to Williamsburg without the provenance. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> So it's kind of like those Queen Anne dolls that were mislabeled for so long before they did the carbon dating on them. Is and yes, uh, Christopher, you're right. The peg dolls do resemble chess pieces. As a matter of fact, when the Lewis, Ch Lewis chessmen were first dug up, people assumed they were toys. So anyway, so in the tell, tell you what I told you. We've gone through the types of dolls that existed in period. We've gone through problems with documenting toys in period, some sources where to find things. Um, the, uh, the Bruegel painting. Please, everybody, go look at that Bruegel painting. Um, you can, you know, if you've got a big screen, blow it up and have fun because it's gorgeous. That um, painting looks like it's got a homemade swimming pool. I found that fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. There are some really amazing ones. And um, the year of that painting? Uh, Bruegel, it's late 1500s. What are Bruegel states? I'm not sure off the top of my head. I don't have it on, my, on, the, on the picture itself. I could look it up. Uh, but I had one other thing I wanted to, to say in the listing of the categories of dolls that we went through. There are links next to that. Um, yeah, I know they're very long. Um, if you're if you're trying to copy them out of a file, uh, you should be able to copy them out of the Word file. I don't know about PDF, um, but those go to the pages where in my own stuff I have some of the documentation saved out um, and some of them it's sections of one page because the uh, the first one the babies and mommets and poppets page has just about everything on it and then a few of them have their own sub pages which the puppets does not as yet i think i'm going to go in there and play with that tonight but uh, okie dokie stop playing with my dolls I think we're done with class, unless there are any other questions. That painting was 1560. 
I Thank just you. was going to say that I just found it. <laughs> there is, by the way, another painting that does have kids playing in it. It's just the children's games one is the one that is so amazing. I'll stop the recording as soon as I can get my mouse to wake up. <laughs> Isn't that always Thank you, everybody, for sticking with me through this one. It's a lot of chitter chatter, but it's fun stuff. It was very um, fascinating. I really enjoyed that. I'm 